Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new section of the course we're going to talk about Firebase Cloud Functions. So what are exactly Cloud Functions and why do we need them? A Firebase Cloud Function is a scalable backend service that runs on the Firebase servers that allows us to implement in a very practical way any backend code that we need for our application. You are probably thinking at this point, but wait, isn't Firebase supposed to be a fully serverless solution for building applications end-to-end? -end? Well, it's true that we can build a large part of our application, I would say more than 95% of it, in a completely serverless way, just focusing on our front-end code and just by adding the Firestore security rules and the storage security rules to our Firebase server. For the vast majority of an application, we don't need any backend code. However, there are certain types of functionality that absolutely need to be run on the backend for security reasons. Let me give you a concrete example. If we switch back here to a larger window, we're going to see here the create user screen that is reachable here via the side menu. Well, this screen allows you to create a new user in your application by specifying the user email and password. And you can even set if the user is an administrator or not, capable of creating other users through this screen. Now, this screen is of course meant to only be used by administrative users. Other users, if they try to access this screen and use it to create a user, they should get an error from our backend denying the creation of that user. So that would be an exploit attempt of a hacker trying to break our application. Now, why can't this functionality be made secure using Firestore security rules only? So if we switch here to our emulator and we check the database, we can see that we have here a users collection. The user collection contains here the user identifier of each of the users in our database. So we could protect the access to this collection and restrict it to only administrative users using Firestore security rules and we have done so already. So that is not the problem. The problem is that in order to create a user, we need not only to add an entry here to this user's collection, but we also need to make a call to Firebase authentication to its servers in order to add the user in the Firebase authentication list. So this is the emulator list, but I'm talking about the list of users in your cloud instance. So if you want to create a user using the create user screen, you need to do two things. First, you need secure access to the database and add an entry in users. And you need to make a call to Firebase authentication and add the user in the Firebase authentication database with the correct custom claims. The user could be an administrator or not. The problem is that this last operation, the call to Firebase authentication, cannot be done in a secure way from the front end. So that is why using just a purely serverless implementation would not work for this particular use case. This is an example of where you absolutely need to run some code from the backend. When you make your call to Firebase authentication, you need to be authenticated with the right credentials that give you access to add new users to your application. So you can only do that in a secure way from a server and not from the client. So as you can see, user creation is an example of a very common use case that cannot be done in a serverless way. Another very common example is, for example, executing payments in your application. If your application is taking on payments, you will need to integrate it, for example, with Stripe or another payment provider, and you can only do that from a backend. Every request for a payment needs to be signed with a private key that only you own, and that can only be done from a backend and not from the user browser directly. Another very typical example of code that you would still like to run in a backend are, for example, database triggers. So we have that functionality in Firestore. Whenever you add something here to the courses collection or you modify one of its elements, you can trigger a database trigger that is going to implement some functionality. For example, you might want to synchronize the course document with another part of your database. You might want to, for example, detect if the course is in promotion or not and increment or decrement a global counter that keeps track of how many courses are currently in promotion in the database. You might also want to trigger some functionality whenever you perform a file upload. 
for example, when you upload a video file, you might want to trigger some functionality to, for example, extract the duration of the video, etc. And that can only be done from a backend as well. So as you can see, there are many use cases for running some code from the backend. Database triggers, operations that can only be done in a secure way from a backend, integrations with third-party platforms, those are all valid use cases for running some code from your backend. Now, most of your code is still going to be on the front-end. The vast majority of the code lines of your application will be front-end code, but you will still need to have a small percentage of your code base on a backend, and Firebase Cloud Functions provides you with a very convenient solution for doing that in Firebase. Now we understand exactly why our project in practice will always have the need to run a little bit of backend code at least. It cannot all be front-end code as you can imagine. So now that we understand why Firebase Cloud Functions are useful, let's talk about exactly what are Firebase Cloud Functions, let's talk about how to set them up in our project, and let's learn how to develop them locally using the emulator. This is coming right up in our next lesson.